Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about romances with scarred characters. I think I have one or two previous recommendation videos so I'll link them down below if you're interested in more recommendations. But here are 10 books with characters who are physically scarred in some way. First I have Broken Whispers by Neva Altaj. This is her second book in her Perfectly Imperfect series which is a mafia romance series where Bianca and Mikhail end up getting an arranged marriage to unite their families. Um, Mikhail is scarred on his face and I think part of his body as well um and he also has an eye patch he I think lost an eye and then the heroine also has scars on her body because she was in a car accident um that left her with the inability to dance again she's a ballerina which is absolutely awful um and she also um is not able to speak because it hurts to speak because she got injured on her throat as well but these two are really really good together at first it's a little awkward because you're marrying someone you do not know but Michaela is such an absolute like big giant man who's a softie and he's also a single dad and Bianca is so incredibly talented and sweet like I love these two so much. Another mafia one is Kingdom Fall by A. Zavarelli. The heroine of this story is our scarred heroine. I cannot tell you why. Her whole backstory is a secret. You're not supposed to know what's going on with her um, but she is another character who is not able to speak so she communicates by writing or with ASL. She gets hired to be our hero's nanny for his young son and there's a lot of mystery and intrigue and things going on in here that you are not privy to as the reader, which is really interesting. Cause a lot of the time when you read a romance where there's like secrets and stuff, like it's the characters who don't know it and you do. Whereas like different characters know what's going on and you don't, like you're trying to figure out what's going on this whole stick book. It's a great nanny romance, but yeah, the heroine has scars on her body because of something that happened to her. And I'm gonna leave it at that. It's a great mafia read. Next is Rush by Emma Scott. So our hero in here used to be like an extreme sport guy and he would write um, articles on this very popular website um, talking about all of his adventures and all the sports he did. It's really fun. Um, but then he was cliff jumping for one of his like events that he was doing and he got injured and he's lost his sight. So he does have scars all over his body because of what happened to him and on his face. Um, and the heroine is hired by the hero's family to take care of him, essentially. To make sure that he eats, to make sure that he's taking care of himself, to take care of him. And the hero does not want that. He wants anything in the world, else in the world but that. He just wants to basically like rot away in his room. He's like, I just want to sit here and do nothing. I don't think I need to do anything. He feels like his life is over. And this heroine shows him life has just begun. Like you have so much more to do with your life just because you can't see doesn't mean that you can't do anything. The heroine's also a musician. Um, she is studying at Juilliard and he just becomes absolutely entranced with her music, which is like beautiful. It's so beautiful. Next is How to Entice an Enchantress by um, Karen Hawkins. This is the third book in a series, but you can read it as a standalone. All you need to know is that each book in the series is about a sister and they get set up by their godmother who's a duchess. And so the hero of the story actually is neighbors to the heroine's like family home. Um, they met, they connected over books, started chatting. He's actually a widower. He proposes to her, not in the best way, kind of like how Darcy proposes to Elizabeth like the first time, not gonna lie. Like it's like a proposal, but it's also insulting at the same time. <laughs> She's like, screw you, I'm not marrying you, no. Um, and so the hero goes to her godmother who is, this duchess and it's like can you please help me try and win this woman please and so she does just that she's a lovely little meddler our godmother duchess i love this series because that godmother is freaking hilarious okay um she has like a million pugs <laughs> and the pugs like meddle in their lives as well it's so funny um so the hero is our scarred character he also has chronic pain he uses a cane to get around and um the reason is because him and his late wife were on a boat and I believe the boat like exploded. There was something going on with like explosives on the boat and it exploded. His wife ended up passing away and he ended up surviving, but now he has um, some scars and some like tissue damage as a result. Next is The Taming of a Highlander by Elisa Braden. This is the second book in her Midnight in Scotland series. There we go. Um, if you wanna read about like a brooding, like giant Scottish man, look, no further. Okay, so in book one, we got to read about our hero who is brother, the brother to the heroine from book one. And he was wrongly imprisoned and he was beat to a bloody pulp in prison, even though he's wrongly accused. So he's been let out because they figured out like he did not commit this crime. And he's now heavily scarred because of it. As you can see, like he also has an eye patch. He's missing an eye, he has eye damage. Um, like he is beaten up by the people in this jail that he was in. And so when he's let out, he wants revenge for the man who 
like pinned his crime on him. Um, so he goes out, seeks him out and decides to enact revenge and beat him to a bloody pole. And so he's doing that in the middle of the woods and the heroine is like walking by and actually witnesses it. And she's scared and she runs away and he finds out like that she was able, like she saw what happened. The bad guy runs away after he gets beaten up. Um, and uh, basically the heroine has to marry the hero to make sure that she cannot testify against him if someone finds out that he like committed this crime about actually like beating up this dude. So um, yeah, there's a lot more going on in here, but it's it's a great read. Like he is the definition of like a grumpy, broody, scarred man. It's an added bonus that he's like a Scottish Highland man. Next I have A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare. This is the first book in her uh, Spindle Cove. Sorry, I forgot the title of the series for a second there. Spindle Cove series. Um, this one's about Susanna and Bramwell. Bramwell um, has been tasked by the king to form a militia in this small town called Spindle Cove. What he does not know is that Spindle Cove is mostly filled with women and the only men there are like a ragtag bunch of men. He's trying to like form a militia with these ragtag men, like old men, boys, like <clears throat> or like men who have no reason to pick up a gun in their life like no <laughs> they should not be given a gun and Susanna actually created this town with her father created Spindle Cove because she experienced a lot of heartache and problems with society in the ton she wanted to create a refuge for other women like her who don't really fit into society and society is kind of like outcasted them and so she made a town for kind of like outcasts and women who don't feel comfortable being in society and so this is their romance like Susanna does not want Bram there Bram doesn't even want to be there but he wants to get back into the militia because he was let go because he got injured and so that's the character who is a scarred character um he walks with a limp he has some like skin damage and nerve damage because of him being shot in the leg um and Suzanne actually helps him with like his rehabilitation which was actually a great scene one of my favorite scenes ever next I have Captive of the Horde King by Zoe Draven I'm holding this book up also to represent like the whole entire series has scarred characters so this is the first book in her Horde Kings of Dakar series in this sci-fi world it's another world from ours um basically you have the dakari who are natives to the planet and um you have horde kings okay you have hordes which are a group of people that like travel around the planet and then you have kings of those hordes and the only way you can be a horde king is to complete these trials that really test your leadership and if you're able to handle like taking care of a village of people and the last test for every single horde king is to receive a hundred lashes on the back. So every single Horde King in this series, every single book in the series has a hero who is like completely scarred on his back because they have a hundred lashings on their back. They have to survive that in order to become a Horde King. So there's that. This one, this first one is about our heroine um, who is a part of the human refugees. The human refugees have rules they have to follow. Like they're not allowed to hunt animals and they're not allowed to burn the land. So she kind of gets into trouble one day when her brother decides to burn their crops that are absolutely failing because he thinks that if he burns the crops, the soil will become more fertile from it and like plants can grow after that. But the fire gets a little bit out of control and the horde like next to them can see the smoke and she's like, oh crap. And she basically tells the horde when they come up to her, like I will take my brother's place. Like don't hurt him, take me instead, like leave him alone. And so this horde king takes one look at our heroine and decides to make her his queen. It's a grand old read. I love this. So every single book in the series has a scarred character. A Baby for the Outcast by Cassie Mint is another scarred hero romance. This one's a novella. Our hero, um, I believe, is a veteran and he um, got injured in war and he is heavily scarred and has a lot of chronic pain. He walks around with a cane to help him get around and he needs an in-home assistant to help him. He's an artist and sometimes it's hard for him to like move around and get supplies so he needs someone there. So he hires the heroine and the two of them actually fall in love and there's like a secret baby baby aspect in here as well. So it's a great little novella if you want a novella. Another Cassie Mint novella that I have is Mail Order Vow. This is another hero who's like reclusive because he's scarred. He thinks no one will love him. So he decides to get a mail order bride who is the heroine and they get married. And yeah, it's just a mail order bride, like little romance novella with like a scarred hero. Um, so another quick novella if you want one. And another quick little novella is this one by Ruby Dixon. This is when she's fearless. As you can see, it's very small. The heroine lives on this planet called Rista 3 and um, she ends up finding our hero one day on her property. She owns some property on this planet, like a farm. And um, the hero actually lost his like data pad or something in this river and is following it through the river. Um, it just happens to be on the heroine's property and she finds him and she decides to like kind of like seduce him. She's like, I think I really like you. You're hot. Come back to my place, basically. It's that simple. Um, and the hero's like in disbelief. He's like, wait, really? 
like this one seems awesome <laughs> anyway the heroine is our scarred one she um experienced quite a lot of abuse uh before she came to this planet because she was a human slave um, and so she's experienced quite a lot of trauma, but she decides to basically make the most out of her life after what happened to her. So I really, I really admire her for that. Anyways, so you have those are 10 romances with scarred characters. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me. What emoji are we going to do? Let's do any yellow emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.